Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. In the last episode of this type of challenge video, the 2 million hit point challenge, we had an event Primo Geo Vishap with 2 million hit points. Well, now we have something similar, and that is a 1.3 million hit point two phased boss, the Magu Kenki. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how fast 16 popular teams can complete the Magu Kenki 1.3 million hit points challenge. The current Abyss 12 has a couple unique boss battles within it, with one of them being the Magic Puppet Sword Demon, aka the Magu Kenki. And with the Magu Kenki comes a massive 1.3 million HP pool, and a unique two-phased boss fight. For this challenge, there are a few rules that need to be followed. The first rule being that offensive cards are generally not to be chosen. They are only chosen if a character's build is a bit lacking in comparison to the others. Next, most of the teams will focus on a single 5-star main DPS character. The idea of this is to gauge how fast a specific 5-star main DPS character can clear this challenge. And this also means that Xiang Ling will not be considered as a main DPS character. Instead, she will be considered as a sub DPS slash support character. However, near the end I will include some compositions that include more than one 5 star main DPS character for comparison's sake. The next thing is that I want the focus to be on tiers instead of the exact number of seconds spent clearing the fight. This is because there is always at least a few seconds of variance for any of the times showcased here. The tiers are as follows. 25 seconds and below is SS tier. 26 to 31 seconds of clear time is the S tier. 31 to 40 seconds is A tier. And finally, everything 41 seconds or above is B tier. Now you might look at these times and think, 25 seconds is a really long time to do a measly 1.3-ish million damage. Well, the Magu Kenki tests everyone's patience with its 17 seconds of invulnerability. The first phase takes around 10 seconds for it to be vulnerable, and the second phase takes about 7 seconds for it to be vulnerable. As such, the fastest possible time to take out the Magu Kenki is probably between 17 and 18 seconds. Another important thing to note is that the Magu Kenki is a single target boss fight. This means that this heavily favors characters that excel as single target damage. The next video I plan to do is something similar to this, but for 1231, and with just a single DPS character's damage, to see how fast that a single character can do 1.3 million damage to two targets, thus being a raw damage AoE showdown. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like that as the next video. And now for everyone's favorite part of the video, the disclaimers. Most of these times you've done my level investment for these characters and at my level of problem solving and skill. This means that barring a couple exceptions, all these characters are constellation 6 with a friend of 5 weapons, and their talents are variable level. I spend between 30 minutes to an hour on each character so it's not to grind infinitely just to save 1 or 2 seconds. Keep in mind that all the times in this video can be improved upon, and this is simply one point of reference. There are most certainly oversights, execution errors, and more. Just because character A performs better than character B in this specific scenario does not mean that character A is better than character B. Please take everything with a giant grain of salt. Whew, well, we still can't get started yet because I need to go over a couple of my support's builds. Both Bennett's and Kazuha's builds do not change at all across all the teams that they're in. Bennett is using the Aquila Favonia with the Noblesse Oblige, and has a level 13 burst and is at Constellation 6. Meanwhile, my Kazuha is using the Freedom Soren Sword with the Viridescent Veneer. His talents are 166 and he is at Constellation 2. Again, these two characters' builds do not change at all throughout the entire video. Here are all the teams I'll be showcasing in this video. With all that out of the way, let's finally get started with our first showcase, the OG DPS gold standard himself, the Batman LARPer, Deluke. Deluke will use the standard Deluke Bennett Xingqiu and Kazuha team. By standing just out of range of the Magu Kenki so Xingqiu's water swords don't remove pyro, this allows Kazuha to get that juicy pyro swirl off. Deluke's N4 did over 100,000 damage in a single vape here. Afterwards, it was simply a matter of getting the entire team's bursts up again for a quick round 2 disposal of the second form of Magu Kenki. Deluke completed this in a solid 37 seconds, thus comfortably putting him in the A tier. The next team comp I want to show is Melt Gone Yu. 
After Ganyu's release, in my opinion, she quickly became the new gold standard for DPS characters to live up to. Also, Melt happens to be Ganyu's better single target DPS option. By waiting for Guoba's attacks to apply Pyro, Ganyu doesn't even need Xiangli's burst or Kazuha's burst to do enough damage to take out the first form of Magu Kenki. However, it then became a matter of waiting for Bennett's burst to be up back again in order to have all their bursts ready for the much beefier second form of Magu Kenki. After a painful slash to the face, Ganyu managed to complete this in an impressive 28 seconds, thus putting her in the 20 to 30 second S rank range. And what better transition to another archer, Yomiya. Now keep in mind that the Magu Kenki is obviously a single target, so this is a fight that heavily favors Yomiya's single target nature. Yomiya will also be using Xiangling for some sub DPS, pyro damage, and pyro resistance shred. <laughs> The most important thing for Yoomiya here is finding a way to reduce the cooldown on their elemental skill as well as getting Bennett's burst up as soon as possible. By relying on Yoomiya's Constellation 4, she is able to get her elemental skill much more quickly than she otherwise would have been able to. And once her elemental skill is back, along with all her team buffs, Yoomiya quickly disposed of her poor puppet friend in just 28 seconds. Thus, this earns Yoomiya a solid s rank placement for this boss fight. The next character is everyone's favorite Genshin Sasuke clone, Xiao. Since I don't have a Constellation 6 Xiao, I asked for Shintenzu over at Xiao Mains for some help with his Xiao. His Xiao is not only Constellation 6, but he's also triple crowned. <laughs> FYI, none of my characters are triple crowned. In fact, none of my characters are even double crowned. Since he has a Refinement 1 Staff of Homa instead of Refinement 5, he was allowed to take offensive cards for his run. As such, his Xiao has both a crit card and a 20% attack card. FYI, Shintenzu currently holds the fastest 12-3-1 Xiao run, and has represented Xiao when so many other speedrunners have already abandoned him. Anyway, the key to Xiao's run being successful was actually relying on the rest of Xiao's team to take out the Magu Kenki's first form. This can serve Xiao's burst for the second form of Magu Kenki and allowed him to funnel all the animal particles to filling Jean's burst instead of trying to fuel both Xiao and Jean. Then, once it was Xiao's turn to shine, with the normal attack 1, charge attack, jump, high plunge, cancel combo, Xiao is doing over 100,000 damage plunges. Remember, the Magu Kenki is a single target opponent, which means that not only is Xiao's huge AoE effectively meaningless against it, but Xiao cannot activate his Constellation 6 for that massive EEE increase in damage. Shintenzu ended up with the current fastest 12 2 1 Xiao time, at least as far as I'm aware, of 40 seconds. This just perfectly plunges Xiao into the A tier, as defined earlier, which was 31 to 40 seconds. The next challenger is the still shiny and new character, the electric Raiden Shogun. Raiden Shogun will have a Constellation 6 Sara on her team to further boost her already impressive damage. Now the first thing you'll probably notice is that I used Raiden's burst well before Magu Kenki became vulnerable. The reason for this is that this allows me to use the tail end of her burst to take out the first form of Magu Kenki, and thus Raiden's burst will be back up sooner than had I used her burst many seconds later, when the Magu Kenki becomes vulnerable. Raiden scored a solid S rank placement, with the fastest time up to this point at 26 seconds. Following that shocking performance from the Raiden Shogun, we have everyone's favorite child arsonist, Klee. This Klee build is heavily focused on maximizing her crit rate to crit damage ratio, with the Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds. Xiangling will be used again as both a sub DPS and pyro damage enhancer. Some of you will notice that I intentionally moved Xiangling out to Bennett's burst. This way, Xiangling stays under 50% HP for the Staff of Home above for the second half of the fight. Then, Klee's 60 to 70,000 damage charge attacks make short work of the first form of Magu Kenki. Once the Magu Kenki came back for round 2, Klee remembered that the Magu Kenki debated her, LARPing as a Dota Go King. As per usual Klee fashion, there are way too many pyro numbers on the screen to keep up with, and the false Dota Go King was handily disposed of in 31 seconds. 
earning Cle her A rank placement. Well, next we have the newest LARPer on the block, Kokomi. Kokomi's LARP of choice is that of a mermaid military strategist. She will be driving Xingqiu and Fischl against the Magu Kenki. Now full disclosure, because my Kokomi is nowhere near fully built, Kokomi's team has a 20% healing card and a 20% attack card to make up for this. Since the first form of Magu Kenki has a relatively small HP pool, in comparison to the second form, I decided to conserve Kokomi's massive burst damage for the second form, and to slowly and steadily take out Magu Kenki's first form, with Xingqiu and Fischl. After getting Xingqiu's burst back up for round 2, then, well, thanks to the impressive single target DPS of both Xingqiu and Fischl, along with Kokomi's 20,000-ish damage normal attacks, the Magu Kenki was taken out in a surprising 37 seconds. This managed to earn Xingqiu's team a highly unexpected A rank placement. I mean, uh, Kokomi's team. <laughs> And next we have the Sneeze Drift Knight and User License Agreement, aka Eula. I deferred Eula's run to Mr. 89, both for saving me some time and also Mr. 89's Eula is substantially better than my Eula is. Crush. By relying on Rosaria's crit rate buff, his Eula ends up with 98% crit rate, and by stacking this with Lisa's buffs, the first form of Magu Kenki stood no chance against Eula's hold E and auto attacks. As for the second form, while well, Eula simply does what Eula does best, and that is building up a bunch of stacks to effortlessly do 1 million damage to cleanly one-shot the Magu Kenki. This puts Eula solidly in S rank, with her 26 second clear time. Now for another Cryo Queen in Genshin Impact, Ayaka. Can Ayaka's insane burst damage keep up with the best? My. Well to start off the fight, we need to somehow take out the first form of Magu Kenki while conserving Ayaka's burst for the second form. With the help of Kazuha's and Mona's buffs, Ayaka is able to fairly quickly take out the first form with her normal attacks. After which, it's just a matter of the usual nuke combo to annihilate our poor puppet volunteer. Ayaka had an expectedly competitive time of 29 seconds, and this also puts her in the S tier. So what kind of top tier DPS character showdown would this be without our favorite coffin salesperson, Hu Tao? Hu Tao needs to run a non-Constellation 6 build since she needs to fight the Magu Kenki for 2 cycles. Also, since Xing Chiu's damage is honestly negligible in this team, my Xing Chiu is using the Sacrificial Sword, so that way he can get his burst up while also taking the least amount of field time as possible. By starting off immediately with Xingqiu's burst, the goal is to get his burst back up as soon as possible. Even with minimal setup, Hu Tao's charge attacks are already doing over 100,000 damage each. Then with some help from Amber, Kazuha, and Xingqiu's burst a second time, Hu Tao's upwards of 200,000 damage charge attacks quickly took out the second form. This puts Hu Tao also at 29 seconds, and lands her squarely in the S tier. And next we have a team comp that breaks the norm throughout the rest of this video, of having one 5 star main DPS character with a team supporting them. This team is an all 4 star Xiangling team. I suppose this is one of the many variants of the national team. By relying on the stove god Guoba and Xingqiu's damage, we are barely able to force the Magu Kenki into its second form, but this also preserves Xiangling's burst for the second form. <laughs> However, once Xiangling's burst starts spinning, it's to no one's surprise that the Magu Kenki got roasted. I realized I also ran the wrong direction, but let's just pretend that didn't happen. Anyway, this puts an all 4 star national team at 38 seconds, at the lower end of the A rank tier. <laughs> 
finally, let's remove the previous limiter of only having one top tier, 5 star DPS character. We'll start with Raiden plus Eula. This disastrous duo has an incredible amount of burst damage, so let's see how they can do. <laughs> Well, 18 seconds. Running two bursters in this case bypassed both of their weaknesses of either Raiden's long cooldown or Eula's need to whack the first form out of existence. This 18 second run actually has very little room for improvement, given Magu Kenki's 17 seconds of invulnerability. As far as I'm aware, this 18 second time is the current world record for this chamber and is also our first SS rank time. Let's quickly take a look at another dual carry comp. Although only a couple seconds slower, this comp is also able to one-shot both forms. For the remaining three team comps, I'll be talking about the summary of the results while those teams run in the background. But to quickly summarize, Aika plus Hu Tao did this in 21 seconds, putting them in SS rank. Child's Reverse Vape team got 29 seconds, putting him at S rank. And lastly, Chi Chi's Physical DPS team got 59 seconds, putting her team in B rank. Now looking at this full list, we can clearly see that the best characters in the game for this specific fight are... Bennett and Kazuha. Seriously, they are supporting almost every team on this list. The only teams that do not use Bennett are Hu Tao, Kokomi, and Physical DPS Chi Chi because of Bennett's Constellation 6. Bennett's buffs at 1202 attack and 20-40% attack are just simply irreplaceable right now. Meanwhile, Kazuha handles two other important multipliers, bonus damage and resistance shred. Once the two of them together, you are jacking up all three of those multipliers tremendously. However, there are a few results that also stood out to me. The first one being Kokomi. Surprisingly, Kokomi is able to capitalize on not needing Bennett and thus slotting in another sub-DPS character, Fischl in her case. Besides, since Xingqiu doesn't snapshot, Kokomi is one of the best characters to not utilize Bennett. Again, this is against a single target, hence why Beidou wasn't used here, and the single target nature of this fight also leads to a huge disadvantage for Xiao. Ultimately though, even a Kokomi team was able to completely dumpster this challenge and it really goes to show that pretty much anything is viable in Genshin Impact. The next thing to point out is the recent shift in the meta to having multiple main DPS characters in a single team. This is because main DPS characters are starting to do tons of damage, but also having a lot of downtime issues. All the S rank characters have massive downtime issues on their DPS, except for arguably Gan Yu. So this leads to dual DPS teams like Raiden Yula, Yula Hu Tao, Hu Tao Ayaka, etc. being the fastest in this situation, especially in a two-phased fight. And frankly, in most of the recent situations in Abyss 12, which have multiple phases. It's also worth noting that you can mix and match many of the top DPS characters in the game for very similar results. Anyway, let me know what you think about the results in this video, and if you're interested in the dual target 1231 version of this video, with the DPS character basically soloing the two rune guards, let me know in the comments below. The reason why they need to solo the chamber is because otherwise all the runs are just 4 to 10 seconds because you can burst them all down with a full team with Bennett and Kazuha. Now I'm personally curious to see how much AoE focused characters like Xiao and Deluc improve in those situations, and we'll also have an excuse to use Beidou. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos, ranging from Caesar showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.